Good morning. Would you please stand for our opening hymn, number 122, Father Lord of all creation.
opportunity to come together so that we can remember whose presence it is in which we live and move and have our being. So as we start our time of worship, let's just open our hearts in gratitude. God is spirit. The Lord is with us. Let us his name together. And we pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And we come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden to ask for his forgiveness and peace. And we just take a moment to think of those secrets which we'd like to think are hidden, but we know aren't. And we pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. And may Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the prayer for today. Almighty God, you search us and know us. May we rely on you in strength and rest on you in weakness, now and in all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for the first Sunday in the season of creation. Grant us, O Lord, to trust in you with all our hearts, for as you always resist the powerful who oppress and dominate creation, so you never forsake your creatures who live in harmony with nature's order. Through Jesus Christ, the wisdom of creation, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And we now stand to sing the Gloria.
please be seated as Diana brings us our first reading. Is is she turned on? (laughs) Okay. stand now to sing our next hymn which is number 50 
hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew from the 16th chapter. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned to Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? For what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of Christ. Please be seated. Oh, Heavenly Father, please be in the words that I speak, in the words that each of us hear. Speak into our hearts and our minds and our lives for you. Amen. As I said at the start of the, the service, we're now entering the season of creation. And this is an ecumenical sort of um, idea. Um, there's churches from all denominations involved in this. And there is some really good material um, out there. If you want to learn more about God and creation and, and how this all works and why creation is important to God, this year, sort of the focus for the season of creation is based around that passage in Amos, let justice flow like rivers. So we're going to be focusing on, cl on the climate and creation, but also where this overlaps with the whole idea of justice. Justice is a, an interesting concept. And our vocation as people of God is to pursue justice and peace. But justice isn't a sort of a straightforward idea. Because it's different to fairness. Because sometimes things that are just don't seem fair. It's different to, to liberation. It's different to equality and just having a whole load of laws. Not all laws are just. And justice is not just about our own personal relationship with God. It is all of those things and more. And if you want to think a bit more about justice, I do recommend this, this book. It was the, Lent, the Archbishop of Canterbury's Lent book for 2022. It's called Embracing Justice. And it's a really thorough discussion and, and about what justice is through the Old Testament and into the New. And explores, explores, I say, explores it deeply. And just, it's not something always that's static and it changes. And our understanding of what is just changes. So hopefully over these coming weeks, you'll be thinking a bit more about what justice is 
and how that relates to our relationship with God's creation and one another. But now turning to our gospel reading, it starts with, from that time on. And those words sort of mark a bit of a change of emphasis and actually direction for where Jesus is going and where the story of Jesus' life is going. Up till that point, Jesus had been mainly focused in Galilee and towards the end of that time, he'd moved even further north out into um, lands that were mainly Gentile and, and, and pagan. And he had been remarkably well received, particularly by, by ordinary people. There were opposition, there was opposition, there were people who he was upsetting. But the crowds loved him. And it's interesting to note from Palm Sunday, the crowds that were praising Jesus were those that had come from the north. The crowds on Good Friday were the people from the city. They are different crowds. But going back up north, Jesus had been well received. He had been well received by all sorts of unlikely people. Sinners, tax collectors, women of dubious uh, reputation. Women are, are people who were not one of the people of God, who were not part of the, of the Jewish community, were not Israelites, were not Hebrew. People who should not be understanding God were understanding him. So it had been quite a, a successful part of his ministry. But from that time on, he is heading to Jerusalem. Now practically, he, had probably, he would have been to Jerusalem a few times. But for the point of the story, this is the point in the story where he is heading to Jerusalem and to his death. He'd been spending time with his disciples, teaching them and coaching them in what it was going to mean to be his followers when all this happened, when he got to Jerusalem He'd been teaching them that things were not going to be easy. And he'd started to, I suppose, prepare the ground for laying the foundations for the community that was going to grow up after he had died, had, had been raised had ascended and after the Holy Spirit had come. He was preparing the ground to lay those foundations. And in our reading last week, Peter, because he had glimpsed who Jesus was, and Jesus had glimpsed who Peter really could be, Peter was identified as part of the foundation, as a key part of the foundation of that community. He was going to be a rock. But these glimpses of God, and I've probably told you before about my experience at the top of Skiddor in the Lake District, climbing up there in, in the mist and the fog and the low cloud and not being able to see anything. But as I started to come down, there were flashes of green and yellow, and gradually there were more of them. And I realized that actually these were glimpses of the valley down below, bathed in sunlight. And we catch glimpses of God. And we catch glimpses of who we really are. And then that 
that story we heard last week. Jesus had seen Peter, Peter had seen Jesus. But this week, Peter, for whatever reason, perhaps got a bit full of himself and his self-importance. Perhaps had just lost sight of who Jesus was. I was just weighed down by the concerns for his beloved friend and also the impact this would have on the rest of the disciples. When Jesus starts to say that he would be going to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering and be killed and on the third day would be raised, I wonder Peter took him aside and actually I think this is quite nice Peter didn't leap up in what we see as typical Peter fashion in front of all the disciples Peter had learned something he took Jesus aside and said you can't mean this this can't happen and Jesus says get behind me get behind me he say this is it so that Jesus isn't tempted and we know that Jesus does get tempted he was in the wilderness and he was tempted in the garden of Gethsemane he was tempted and is he tempted here by Peter to turn back and not step on that path to Jerusalem Is he putting Peter in his place? If, P, if, he's not, if Peter's got a bit of full of himself. Don't get ideas above your station. Just because I have seen you and given you a job to do and a role, don't think more of yourself than you should. But there's also something about get behind me so that you can follow me. Get behind me so that you can follow me. So our building block, which has become a stumbling block, there's perhaps so much going on there. But Jesus is clear on the direction that he must go. And we know that later he will tell Peter that his journey will end in fairly similar circumstances. But Jesus goes out to the disciples and he starts to explain in more detail the difficulties that they will face. And he tells them that they will have to deny themselves, deny their own self-image, and we all have this image of ourselves. Some of it's shaped by, by negative things, where we think of ourselves as, as unloved, uncared for. Sometimes shaped by ideas that make us, making ourselves out to be bigger and more important than we are. We all have a self-image, which God which we are called to deny to get down to the true root of who we are as beloved children of God. We are called to deny ourselves, to deny our dreams, our hopes. We are to follow the deepest desire which God places in us, but to deny the hopes and dreams that we hang around that. We are to deny ourselves our hang-ups. Again, we all have those. And we are to take up our cross. Now we will often use that expression. I mean, we all have a cross to bear. The difficulties in our lives, we see those as the cross that we have to bear. But that isn't what it would have meant in Jesus' time. If you saw somebody crying a cross in Jesus' time, they were on their way 
to their execution. It was a sign not just of imminent death, but a shameful and painful death as well. But it's this idea of pain and sacrifice and denying ourselves that perhaps brings us back to or makes a link with our theme of creation and justice. Jesus says those who want to save their lives must lose it. Those who lose their life for Jesus will gain it. Is there something in the call for action to save the, our climate and to try and reduce the impact of climate change? Is there something in this that requires denial of ourselves, requires a sacrifice? Because literally people are dying because of it already and more will die. Even if we manage to reduce carbon emissions tomorrow, the impact that has already started, the weather patterns, that will take some time to settle down. It's not a pretty picture. And it seems hopeless. What can we in our little lives do? I think the message of Jesus is always a message of hope. And we are to be people of hope and courage. And knowing that our self-sacrifice, however small, is of value. We might not be able to change the whole direction of climate change, but our sacrifice is valued by God. The sac any sacrifices we make are of value. And are necessary. Our reward will be a heavenly one. And just a little focus on that last phrase of our reading. Jesus says, Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. It's one of those tricky tricky uh, lines, sentences to understand. But it's obviously talking about Jesus coming, of the kingdom of God coming, coming on earth. Now it's easy to see that as something that will happen at some part in the future. And I have even heard people argue that actually it's okay if we destroy the world because that will just bring Jesus back quicker. Slightly strange logic, but it is a logic I have heard expressed. That it's okay, because ending the world will bring Jesus back. But even if we you know, I don't think any of us would go that far. But if we just postpone the idea of Jesus coming, of the kingdom of God coming, as being some point in the future then it does let us off the hook a bit. If we see, it, the interesting, in all the Gospels where we have this similar passage, the next bit of the story is the transfiguration. And Jesus is seen in all his kingdom glory. The kingdom of heaven was breaking in then. At Jesus' resurrection, he has a new body. And he is part of the new creation. The kingdom is breaking in. And at Pentecost with the Holy Spirit, the kingdom is breaking in and lives in us. So it's not something we can postpone. God will sort it out. The kingdom of God is in the here and now. And we are called to act in the here and now. So let's just take a moment to reflect on what we think 
justice is. And what we think it means to follow Jesus in a life of sacrifice. But also to see the hope that we know comes as the kingdom breaks in. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that Jesus saw Peter saw the rock that he was, the rock that he could be, and resisted the temptation when Peter became a stumbling block. Lord, help us as you see into our hearts. Help us to see what we can be doing, what we can be as light in this world. Help us to be agents of your kingdom breaking in. Help us to be assured that we do have your power to be light and life in this world. Amen. And as our response, we stand now to declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And please be seated as Gloria comes to lead us in our intercessions. Preserver of all mankind. Now, at creation tide, we pray for people of every race and in every kind of need. Make your ways known on earth, your saving power 
among all nations. We commend to your fatherly goodness all who are anxious or distressed in mind or body. Comfort and relieve them in their need. Give them patience in their sufferings and bring good out of their troubles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy Father, we pray for your church. Fill it with love and truth and grant it that unity which is your will. Enlighten your ministers with knowledge and understanding that by their teaching and their lives they may proclaim your word. We ask your blessings and protection upon our own Andrew, Pauline, Janine and Gavin as they continue to spread your light upon us. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Loving Lord, we ask you to guide the leaders of the nations into the ways of peace and justice. Also, those who administer the law, that they may uphold honesty and truth, both locally and nationally. We pray you help us to forgive our enemies and persecutors and turn their hearts away from wrongdoing and revenge and towards loving kindness and care. You have given mankind free will. We beg you influence those who use it to the detriment of others away from selfishness, corruption, cruelty, and war. Guard the innocent and vulnerable and all who suffer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of compassion, we pray you provide for the homeless, the hungry, and destitute, and show your pity on prisoners and refugees. Help and comfort the lonely, the bereaved, and the oppressed. Heal the sick and guide those who have given up all hope towards your saving grace. As always, we turn to those on our prayer list, many of whom have completely recovered, or at least are much improved, for which we give you our thanks. However, we still pray for Patty, Jenny, Joy, John, Pat, Brenda and Steve, Kenneth, Margaret, Michael Senior, Michael Junior, Bill J, Bill L, Malcolm, Nev, Poppy, Jenny and Stuart, Roger, Kelly, Joy, Sasha, Ian, Kate and Jeff, Janie and Antonia. Lay your comforting hand upon our friends in residential care. Ellen, Muriel, Eileen, Maureen, Pat, Vera, Steve and Ray. We pray for those who have died recently. Beryl Woolard and Iris McGrath. 
and those whose anniversary of death falls this week. Derek Pentley. Our love goes out to Charlie and Janine as they are adjourned next week. Lord, in your mercy, heaven. Lord the Creator, teach us to use the fruits of the earth to your glory and for the good of all mankind. Bless our King and his family as they pursue this end. Help control the dangers created by global warming and climate change, the wildfires, the floods, and save those suffering due to them. In our own small way, we will try to continue to live our lives as you would wish, raising money here at church for charities and good causes, always aware of your presence and encouragement. And so rejoicing in the fellowship of Mary, the Mother of God, St. Anne, St. Lawrence, and all your saints, we commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Gloria. Would you please stand? We are the body of Christ. In the one body we were all baptised, in the one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. They share a sign of peace with one another. And our, our next hymn is one that, um, as I say, we, we were a little concerned people may be unfamiliar with. So John will play the first verse, we'll play the verse through once before we start. So.
nice idea, the world being turned upside down. What a fun. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through you, through your goodness, we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It becomes for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. And yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Please be seated. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom, all you, have through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a holy people in Jesus Christ our Lord. You raise us to new life in him and renew in us the image of his glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. 
And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. We offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and cup so that we, in the company of Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Anne, Saint Lawrence, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. And Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. So draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
God, our creator, you feed your children with the true manna, the living bread from heaven. Let this holy food sustain us through our earthly pilgrimage until we come to that place where hunger and thirst are no more. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we join together in the second of the post-communion prayers. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And we stand to sing our final hymn, number 532. We have a gospel to proclaim. So we'll start here. So God gave life when he made the world. God gives life when he forgives us for our wrongdoings. So we get new life when we say sorry to God. He gave new life to Lazarus when he was brought out of the tomb. And he gave life to all of us. Gave new life to Iris. We gave life to Iris and to each one of us. So that's really good. Thank you very much. I do love the drawings.
<laughs> so the Lord be with you. The power of the Lord Jesus draw us to himself. And the love of the Lord Jesus strengthen us in his service. And the joy of the Lord Jesus fill our hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.